who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. Ecclesiastes 11 colon 4 According to 1 Kings 11 colon 3 the wise King Solomon, who wrote those words, had 700 wives and 300 concubines. By those numbers you would think he would know a thing or two about commitment in the context of marriage. Make sure you subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. Also you can give me thumbs up and put on the notification bell, this way you can get more of my video. So is the verse quoted above merely a bit of agricultural wisdom or is there more to it? What is commitment? Webster's defines commitment as the state or instance of being obligated or emotionally impelled. This seems like a rather cold definition of marriage, so perhaps a better way to think of marriage is not as a commitment, but as a covenant. In the Jewish culture of both Solomon and Jesus a covenant was not only binding on both parties but permanent. When we stand before God and make a commitment to love, honor, and cherish our spouse, we are making a covenant between us and our spouse and between us, as a married couple, and God to a lifelong, binding, permanent commitment. Unfortunately, we live in a culture that is obsessed with the temporary and downright dismissive of the permanent. People are constantly chasing after the latest and greatest technological gadget only to discover it is obsolete before they get it out of the box. Is it any wonder our culture views marriage as easily dissolved and discarded? The Commitment Cure How do we move beyond the disposable nature of our culture and into a place where we see marriage as the lifelong, deep, personal covenant God intended it to be? The first step is to build our marriages on the solid rock of Jesus Christ, Matthew 7, 24-27. This means looking beyond our feelings and emotions. Emotions, like the wind Solomon refers to, can change frequently. By highlighting the emotional aspects of life, our culture has given us the false impression that love should come easily. Essentially, the focus is on love the noun rather than on love the verb. To maintain the commitment required to build a lasting marriage you need much more of the verb than of the noun. What does this love look like? The Apostle Paul describes it clearly in 1 Corinthians 13, 4-8. Love is patient and kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Another aspect of commitment is seeing the good in our spouse instead of their imperfections. It means removing the plank from our own eye before removing the speck from our spouse's eye, Matthew 7, 5. Most of all it means remembering the words of Romans 3:23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Many people spend their lives either searching for the perfect mate or settling for what they feel is the best they can get. Neither attitude is helpful to creating a successful marriage. Simply put there is no such thing as a perfect mate. We are all imperfect people living in an imperfect world. To expect perfection of another human being or a relationship with a fellow imperfect person is the height of folly. Most of all, commitment means you are in it for the long haul. Difficulties will come. There will be times when, no matter how much you love your spouse, you really do not like them. This is normal. Some of these issues are satanic in origin and some things are just a part of life. Emotion is like the cloud Solomon speaks of in Ecclesiastes 11 colon 4. Commitment means moving beyond the emotions, beyond the heat of the moment and realizing that the clouds will pass and the sunshine will return. Perhaps the most vivid and detailed picture of what a marriage should look like is found in Ephesians 5 colon 22 33. In these verses Paul shows us the points of connection between our covenant with Christ and the covenant of marriage. The passage shows love in action by the husband, the wife, the church, and Christ. It gives a blueprint for how to make a marriage last, how to see the big picture and remain committed regardless of the wind or clouds which cross your field. 